Indewo keruki mere adima. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Hopefully you'll be able to say the same thing and that uh, God is blessing you. Of course, the name of God can be said a couple ways, at least in Igbo, chineke, or it can be he can be said as chukwu. So hopefully God is blessing you accordingly. Uh, just going through about 10 words, just a quick video here in regards to the Igbo language of Nigeria. Uh, my ancestral tongue, so I'm still at it and still trying to learn the language of my ancestors and get about a year and three or four months invested in it. So if you're a native speaker, uh, please forgive my mistakes and feel free to correct me as I'm still trying to learn and be fluent as we go through uh, this study. Uh, so we're just going to do items 11 to 20 uh, from the category of shapes. And the word for shapes is OD. OD is shapes. And again, remember the Igbo alphabet uh, is different than ours, has more letters and different pronunciations. Again, whenever you see a dot underneath a letter, that basically is called a diacritic. And it gives it a different pronunciation. For instance, what looks like a U in English, it's got a different name in Igbo. I'm just going to use English pronunciation for simplicity. That makes an O sound. And the I with a dot underneath makes a really, really sharp high like I or E sound. So that's why you hear me saying O-D, O-D for shapes. All right, again, just so you can see who's talking to you. For those that don't know me, again, this is just me coming back from... Um, the city of Uyo in the uh, province, which is a state in, in uh, the United States of Akwaibom in Nigeria, uh, when I came back from 2019. All right, so let's go to the new words today. Uh, for most that are native English speakers like myself, these are probably a little bit easier to you because honestly, most of these words that we have for shapes, at least in my Igbo 101 book, um, really are derivatives of English words. They're basically almost like you're saying the English word, but you're putting an accent to it so that the Igbo tongue can pronounce it as well as process it uh, in the brain as well. Uh, so for line, in other words, a line, whether it's ver vertical or horizontal, it will be lino, lino for line. So remember you have Two special pronunciations. The actual regular I character has an E sound and the U with the dot underneath, remember that makes an O sound. So that's why you hear me saying Lino for line. Lino line. Okay, octagon, the eighth sided figure. And I'll be honest with you, I had to look up the names of uh, many of these shapes back in a uh, dictionary because I had forgotten exactly what they meant. Hadn't really dealt with shapes since uh, uh, 10th grade or so back in uh, high school, which is about 30 years ago. So a lot of that had faded from my mind. But for octagon, remember you have uh, two special characters. The O with a dot underneath it makes an A sound like auto, auto. And again, you have that U with the dot underneath, that diacritic with an O sound. So what you're saying is octagonal for octagon. Uh, excuse me, I said it incorrectly. It's octagonal for octagon. Octagonal for octagon. Uh, so again, it's just a few syllables. Octagonal for octagon. So I'll just say it again, uh, more natural. Octagonal octagon. Again, an uh, eight-sided figure. All right, an oval uh, will be pretty easy for us to uh, say that our First uh, tongue being uh, English. Oval would be ovalo, oval. Again, ovalo, oval. So there's three syllables. Ovalo is oval. Ovalo, oval. All right, parallel lines. Again, these are lines that go in the same direction and never cross. Uh, if you're going back to, again, to geometry 101. Uh, Parallel lines, again, only, only special character, uh, two special characters, actually. The U, again, with the dot underneath is an O. The E makes an A sound, and again, the I makes an E sound. So just hear, hear me out, and you know you can definitely try to imitate it. It makes it a lot easier when you say it along with me, if you're trying to learn with me. 
And I appreciate everybody that's uh, gone on this journey with me all this time. Quite a few, you know, I've been faithful to these broadcasts. Uh, so for parallel lines, it's parallelo, that means parallel, and lino is line. So you just said parallel lines literally, so we'll put it together. Parallelo lino is parallel lines. So again, parallelo lino, parallel lines. Okay, the Pentagon, like our government building here in the United States, a five-sided figure. Uh, again, you just convert your E to an A sound, uh, the O with the dot underneath, diacritic, to do an A sound, and the U under with the dot underneath, you make an O sound. So it's Pentagono, Pentagon. Pentagono, Pentagon. So one more time, Pentagono, Pentagon. All right, perpendicular lines. Now this one's I struggle with a little bit. So if I stutter through it, I'll say it again and try to say it correctly. Uh, but perpendicular lines, which you know in geometry is the intersection of two lines at a 90 degree angle. Uh, so for perpendicular lines, we'll just go one word at a time. Again, your A's, you convert that to, I mean your E's, you, you convert to an A sound. The I with the dot underneath, you convert to a real sharp I or E sound, like ink, ink, ink. The U with the dot underneath is your O sound. All right, so you're looking at, for the first word, pependicola, pependicola, again, pependicola. And then the last one, you know, because uh, you've had it a couple times so far, is lino for line. So what you want to do is put it together. You know, pependicola is perpendicular and lino is line, lines or lines, either one. So it's pependicola lino. Perpendicular lines. Again, pe pain di cola lino. Perpendicular lines. All right, the polygon. Polygon basically can be a shape of any type in geometry. And it just means a shape that is made of all straight lines. So you can't have any curves or anything within them. Uh, so obviously a polygon can be a a triangle can be a pentagon can be a square or anything you can think of as long as it's made out of straight lines so a polygon is really not as hard to uh pronounce again because it's basically a modification of an english word so it's um the e i mean the i becomes an e sound the o uh, diacritic becomes an o sound and the u diacritic becomes an o sound so it's Polygono is polygon. Polygono, polygon. So again, we'll just say try to be more natural with it. It's polygono, polygon. All right, pyramid. Again, you just have uh, two special pronunciations. The I with the dot underneath, the diacritic, gives you that high I sound. And the regular I makes an E sound. All right, so it's Pyramidi. Pyramidi is pyramid. So one more time. Pyramidi pyramid. All right, just a couple more or so, and we'll be done. All right, rectangle. Uh, it's going to sound a lot like the English. It's going to be rectangolo. Rectangolo is rectangle. So again, rectangolo. Rectangle. All right, last time, rectangolo, rectangle. All right, last one, rhombus. This is one I did have to look up in the dictionary because I was not familiar with this word at all, but it basically means a shape with equal sides. So uh, a square can also be a rhombus. Uh, so rhombus is rombusu. So just three syllables, rombusu is rhombus. So again, Rombusu rhombus. All right, thanks for joining me. That's our 10 words for today. And as time permits, I'll do 10 more until we finish the uh, shapes, which is old, OD, is shapes in the Igbo language of Nigeria. All right, thanks for joining me. And of course, uh, again, I bid you the farewell. Uh, Imela means thank you. And I'm thank you for joining me. And I'm going to say uh, good night to you. Kachifo, good night. Thanks again. Bye bye.